Well, it's hard to believe that we are almost wrapping up community groups. This is one of our last few ones. So uh, make sure not to take that for granted. Uh, it's good that we're back from spring break. I feel like a lot of us haven't seen each other. So I'm happy we're back together. Uh, if you weren't with us this past Wednesday, we've been going through our series on vintage, our deep dive into the Old Testament, and we hit on David's life. Now, I think for a lot of us, we're kind of familiar with David and Goliath's story or David's back and forth with King Saul. But what we're talking about this past Wednesday, what we're going to talk about more tonight is when David was king at the peak of his kingdom and, and really sin that left his life just broken. Uh, stuff that's necessarily not what you find in Sunday school stories, uh, but really deep hearted sin that goes unconfessed for a long time. And what really our, our main point in our study of 2 Samuel, we were in 2 Samuel chapter 7, 11, and 12, was uh, no matter how big or small our sin is, uh, you have the God of the universe who stands waiting to forgive us if we break over the things that break his heart. And so you're going to see from the start in chapter 7, uh, God makes a covenant with David, and it goes even further beyond his life, saying, uh, I'm going to establish a kingdom that will last forever um, from your name. And, and now that's not saying that that is uh, David or that is Israel, but that is to point us uh, to Jesus. And David probably uh, didn't know everything that was meant by that, but knew that God had committed to him, not just for his life, but for the rest of eternity. And so thinking through that, uh, we know that God knows that David's going to mess up. And so we have to see that uh, the covenant that David made, uh, or excuse me, the covenant that God made with David uh, is not dependent on his circumstances or how well he was doing. Uh, no, it was dependent all on how faithful God is. And the same works in our lives. If we are in Christ, he has made a covenant with us that he is sanctifying us through his son, through the new covenant. And one day he will take us and one day he will remove us from uh, our sinful flesh for eternity. And so we can rest in that. The second thing we're going to see tonight is that God is not blinded by our secret sin. God sees everything. And also, uh, our sin actually blinds us in the moment from our guilt. And so you're going to see that in chapter 11. David, uh, the way the author describes it, while uh, other kings would have been off at war, David decided to remain at home. Uh, this shows, I think, that uh, in our idleness, uh, that's when sin really approaches us hard. Uh, I feel like for a lot of us, if we if we tend to stay busy and do the things we ought to do, uh, that steers us clear from even thinking of different types of temptation. And that's where, exactly where we find David. Uh, he's sitting in his palace, notices a beautiful woman outside bathing, uh, and he lusts after this woman, asks who she is, uh, figures out that it is Bathsheba, uh, Uriah's wife, one of his uh, faithful soldiers to him. Uh, instead of uh, repenting from his lust, uh, he uses his power to bring Bathsheba in. Uh, he commits adultery, and through this adultery, uh, she becomes pregnant. Uh, that doesn't stop David there, uh, but he actually brings Uriah in from battle, uh, tells him he needs to relax and do relaxing things with his wife, hoping that he would have sex with his wife and that the baby would be covered up and Uriah would think it was his. Um, but Uriah was actually faithful not to do that. Uh, there's a Levitical law saying that uh, when Israel is in battle at camp, uh, they are not to lay uh, with their wives. And so he remained outside. He did not sleep with Bathsheba that night. And because of that, David ends up planning his murder, making it look like he died in battle. And through it all, you see all of this wreckage and this damage of what David should have just initially repented from. And because of that, you see that from his uh, his withdrawal from not repenting to the Lord, uh, he brings all these other people in his sin. And not only uh, does it affect Uriah and Bathsheba, but it affects uh, all the people of Israel, as we see in chapter 12. And that brings us to our last psalm tonight, which was God removes the blinds of sin with hard truth. And hard truth leads to sweet repentance. And you're going to see that in David's life. In chapter 12, God sends the prophet Nathan to give him a story to make him think outside of his perspective. When David sees the injustice of the story, he says, this is a fair. And Nathan simply responds, David, you are that man. And that instantly leaves David to repentance of everything that he did. 
uh, with a summary statement saying, I have sinned against the Lord. Now, David had sinned against way more people than just the Lord, but here's what he was saying. Uh, everything I did was because I had sinned directly against God and his commandments for me. And, and that goes for all of us in our life. Any, any action that we do, uh, whether it's uh, vertical or horizontal, is ultimately uh, against what God has commanded that promotes the well-being for our lives. And it's us trusting in ourselves rather than trusting in a good God. And, and because of this, David brings all these other people in, and the consequences of his sin are real. Uh, Nathan lays out uh, the destruction that's going to happen within his own family and uh, everything else, so it's, what's going to happen with uh, his child. Uh, but the promise still holds true to David. Uh, the promise made in 2 Samuel 7 that uh, he will build a kingdom to come forever in the name of David, and that kingdom was to be built for King Jesus. And so as, as hard as the story is, uh, there are two things that give me hope. The first is this, is that uh, we can come to God with anything, with, with any of our junk, and lay it at his feet. If we are broken over the sin that God has broken over, he freely forgives all the time and every time. Look at David, an adulterer and essentially a murderer uh, who is broken over the things he does and God has forgiven him and actually calls him a man after his own heart. And, and this is simply not to say uh, David's a man after his own heart because of uh, David and Goliath where he's a king, but no, David is broken over the things that break the heart of God. And, and the final reason of why we have hope in a story like this is that David is not our ultimate hope. Uh, David is to point us to the one to come, which is the true king in Jesus. And so uh, we see that Jesus came to this earth and was tempted in every way like David was, yet he did not sin. Uh, David can tell us who to repent to, but Jesus tells us that I am the one to repent to. I am the one that forgives the sins. David says, I have a broken heart, but we get to see the very goodness of who Jesus' heart is through his life and his death and his resurrection. So I hope that this is helpful today. I hope it leads to good conversation and we'll see you guys next time.